Hello guys, I'm the Anime Uprise, and today I'm going to talk about why Sword Online is a good anime, and there's five reasons here I'm going to mention, and I just want to get this video over with, this is my, like, my third, fifth time doing this, so yeah, uh, this is a new series called Five Reasons Why Anime is Good or Bad, and you know, uh, if, I, if, I like a if I like anime, I'm going to make five reasons why it's good, and if I don't like it, I'll make five reasons why it's bad. But yeah, with that said, let's just get on to the main topic at hand, because Let's make this video under five minutes, or long, or just hopefully under five minutes. Anyways, let's go. Number one, the soundtrack. Okay, I'm gonna completely neglect my script because my script is terrible. So yeah, but I did write some good stuff in it, but I'm not going to address it. Okay, the soundtrack is completely amazing. Like, okay, honestly, if anyone. Anyone, even if they hate Sword Online, can't say the, so the soundtrack from the series is bad because this anime and the soundtrack is utterly amazing. It really pulls it into the world. It really fits the anime. It fits the world itself. That honestly makes me enjoy the anime a lot more, which and that's probably the case for lots more people. It makes this all the scenes in the anime, especially the battle scenes, more memorable. Especially the, the scene with the gleam eyes, which I'll probably get into them more later. But yeah, the soundtrack is utterly amazing and honestly, I enjoy it a lot. And one thing you guys got to say is that Luminous Sword? That soundtrack is godlike. Next one. Okay, the main characters. The main characters themselves. Or Kirito. This one is obviously going to be biased to me. So I'm going to talk about the main characters, like only Asuna and Kirito. As I love both those characters, and I love the romance that went between them, but in another video where I shouldn't, I might make on um, their like, you know, Kirito and Zasa's relationship so to ruin the series, but I'll make that, that that's another time, but honestly, this is what I like about it. So Kirito is an OP main protagonist, which honestly, I love. That's why I said it's biased. I love OP protagonists. I love seeing characters kick ass when they fight. It's amazing. I love I love to see them fighting characters and just utterly destroying them on the battlefield with no effort given. So honestly, that's really why I like sort of not because like you get the security of kick ass. He will beat everybody so easily without giving, well, without trying at all. I'm not gonna go that deep in swearing, guys. I'll also kick ass, but nothing else. I'm not, gonna, I'm not ready for anything else yet. But yeah. So with that. Um, that's the character portion, I just like that he's an over overpowered character. Now, Asuna, his psychic, at least she's all online. In the first Ainkar arc, I like her. It, when she, once we get to the, you know, the other seasons, I only want to say Shadow Online was trash. But, the first season, because you know seasons are like 12 episodes or 12 to 14 episodes, you know? The first season, I enjoyed quite a bit. Which is probably everyone else, even who enjoys Sword Art Online, does too. So Asuna was... They say she was only... She was second... Kibito's only rival, per se, was Asuna. Because she was the only person who was close to Kirito was Asuna. And, or if you could say Eve Click, because he was like, the strongest up there because he made the game. But you could say that he wasn't, because he cheats to be strong. But, yeah, Asuna was beautiful. She had the strength. And I imagine she's beautiful. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I just like her character and all. She had this, she has little power and strength in everything she does. And she's a really good story. And she helped improve the story quite a bit. Now we're going to number three. The premise, the story itself. The story itself is quite amazing. Like, honestly, I love the story because, you know, getting sucked into a game. I, lo I always love the Isekai genre because you, got, you, you see the main character who obviously doesn't, like, have the best life in his world. He gets transported to another and makes his life a lot better. He does everything he wanted to do. He, he, he's so powerful now that he could do anything he wants, which is well, just a, a sword. He can get anywhere he wants to go with the sword. It's literally what he said in the end. He loved that world. He was better in that world. He was in his ideal world. And I love seeing characters just being overpowered, like I said before, being happier. 
Just, I love happy ending stories. I'm not a big fan on tragedy. So, yeah. Kirito's story in the Isekai genre, and just how everything went, and how they got into the story was also great. Getting stuck into the game, but you can still die? And the thing is, you're not you're not getting stuck permanently in that world. If you're in a game, you have to you have to beat the game to get out of there. So they go to beat the game because they want out, obviously. So it's not like any other isekai anime where they, they get transported to another world and just stay there. They actually have a goal to leave that place, and in the end, they do. They leave sort of online. So that's honestly amazing thing about it. That, that is, so that that. that that separates themselves from the other Isekai anime. But I can acknowledge that there are bad things that come after that, so they could have stayed in the, in the Iron Cred a little bit longer. Anyways, the next one, the villains or the boss battles. Okay, I'm only going to be mentioning Heathcliff and Gleam Eyes, since Heathcliff was the final boss of the series in Iron Cred arc anyway, and Gleam Eyes was the most memorable villain for me. So Akiko Kaiba? Okay. He was something to behold. Akiko Kaiba, he cheated because he didn't want to die in his own game. Because, you know, he's the main villain. He's the guy everyone wants to beat. He's the guy who runs it. He's the guy who's able to, like, turn the servers off, log everybody out because he has admin access. But with that access, he can also cheat in the game, become the strongest player, and live in the world he wanted. He built. He wanted, he built. So... Yeah, he didn't really have that kind of vibe, like, it just sort of felt like a fight to have a battle, like, the fight to end the anime. That's how it really felt, like. It felt like to end the arc, they had to go into a battle. And Akio Kaiba was right there, because he was there, and, well, they had to beat him. But with Gleam Eyes, on the other hand, it felt he felt so menacing, like, how an introduction, like, Asuna and Kirito walk in his room, and he just roars on, like, he gives a big powerful roar and all the lights on the music was spot on the soundtrack was amazing oh god I'm a fanboy of the soundtrack it's like this series five pick five series I have my favorite soundtrack so don't not be number one but it was just amazing so I rewatched Star Online recently by the way that's why I'm making this video but honestly it's amazing I love the soundtrack and this made it so memorable for me <laughs> I can't say it so when Kirito beat Gleam Eyes it was just so amazing because the music the animation was stunning, and I was able to remember him. But when Heathcliff, when he appeared to be Heathcliff, it felt anticlimactic because honestly, he he was cheesed to beat him. Like he resurrected himself, which is also a fault. Okay, now we're going to the art style. Yeah, I don't have a big finale. I just like the art style. A1 Pictures did a beautiful job of making this series look, sound, and just overall amazing series and all they did. They, and they achieved everything they wanted to achieve with this series, but they made it beautiful, they made the portrayed the story, they did everything they do, and the art was top notch. That's what I'll have to say. Okay guys, I do acknowledge that Soda Online has more faults than it does like the good stuff. Like the good stuff and the bad stuff, the, the bad overly outweighs the good. At least in Soda Online 1. Oh, actually, in Soda Online she's on season 1 and season 2. They were both... Bad? Eh... No, they were bad. They were alright anime. But yeah, I just wanted to say this. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell button if you really want to, to stay updated with my new videos. With that said, I will see you guys all next time.